If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I am super duper excited to sew along with you the Aviatrix bag by Pin It Up Patterns. Now, if you don't know already, Pin It Up Patterns is a newer um, pattern design company uh, that is co-owned by myself and Anna of Galaxy Customs. We started this business because we wanted to start designing retro, trendy, yet modern bags. So this is our second ever pattern. Our first pattern is called the Up and Away Handbag, which is quite a bit larger than these ones. This one is called the Aviatrix Bag. So Anna and I definitely hope that you enjoy this as much as we do. First off, let me give you a quick tour of this bag. So this is the wet bag I do make in this tutorial. Um, it has a, a crossbody strap that is dual colored on the back. You have a zipper pocket with overlay. We have a removable crossbody strap because you could use this as an evening clutch if you prefer as well. Now the part that we are super proud of is this flap. You can see how it's a two-tone flap, but under each flap is a separate compartment of this bag. So when you open up this top flap, oopsies, it opens up into a fairly large compartment with a zipper pocket with overlay on one side. Underneath the bottom flap here, it opens up. We have a center divider zipper pocket. One, two, three, eight card slots, which also has a slip pocket here and a slip pocket, whoops, and slip pocket with accent strip on this side. This pocket could also be split into two if you wanted to have that extra slip pocket in there. So proud of it. Let me show you this bag here. This is one made in different vinyls. This vinyl is from uh, So Yours, uh, and the red vinyl is a pearl vinyl from Galaxy Customs. All of my hardware and everything for this is from MLI Bags. Now this bag that I'm making in the tutorial, I have chosen to do the main in a glitter vinyl from Galaxy Customs. The gold here is also a pearl vinyl from Galaxy Customs. All of my hardware is from MLI Bags. My zipper pulls are from Blue Cala, and my glittery zipper tape, I have no idea. Somebody gifted it to me. I, I do not know where it is from. Now, let's talk about guts of this bag. So, the main stabilizer in this bag, we used EB Fuse Heavy, which is a heavy woven interfacing. We get that from MLI Bags. It is similar in weight to, say, a Decaval Light. So, anything that is a heavy woven interfacing or something similar to Decaval Light is the perfect stabilizer for this bag. All of those stabilizers, we have pattern pieces that keep that stabilizer outside of the seam allowances to reduce any bulk. All my cotton pieces I have aligned with EB Fuse Light, which is similar to an SF101 or a medium woven interfacing. Again, all the EB Fuse products you can get from Emma Line Bags. Um, yeah, that's it for interfacing. Um, we really do prefer the EB Fuse uh, products, especially the heavy in, re in place of Decaval Light, mainly because it fuses so good. And when uh, you're working with the bag, it doesn't pull away at all. This bag here, I did do the experiment of doing it with Decaval Light and it worked perfectly well as well. So either interfacing would be great. Um, now, for the center divider pocket, You'll see here, I did mine in the glitter vinyl. Um, I don't recommend doing that. This one, I did my center divider pocket in a pearl vinyl. In the pattern, we do recommend that you do that center divider pocket with a thin vinyl, cork, cotton, or canvas, mainly because um, that pocket, we do box those corners, and with the thicker vinyls, like I have used in both of these bags, it creates a really thick seam to uh, go and box those corners over. Again, I'm on an industrial, so it was not a problem for me, but um, if your machine is sensitive to those, make sure you are doing as we suggested in the pattern, using a thinner vinyls or whatever for that center divider pocket. Um, yeah. Uh, the finish in this bag is a drop-in lining. Do not be scared of it. It's an easy drop-in lining. It is done. You'll see it in the video. Um, 
all the way around here so it's not a zip top drop in lining it it goes so fast and it just makes it so easy to finish off this bag and then you only have to turn the exterior the one time who doesn't love that which is even better if you are using deck of a light because you know what happens with deck of a light when you go to turn it around um yeah thank you everybody for watching this video and how about we get to making this bag i'll catch you guys on the other side so you can need some rivets number five zipper tape three number five zipper pulls four magnetic snaps two d-rings a slider two swivel clasps and your nameplate for pieces you're going to need your uh, crossbody strap and your accent piece for your strap your connector two zipper ends, your main front exterior end lining, your main back exterior end lining, your main flap exterior end lining. These are mirrored to one another. Your exterior accent flap panel, exterior end lining. Again, they are mirrored. your center divider to exterior to lining, your two zipper pocket pieces, your slip pocket pieces, card slot piece, and your card slot back. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we are going to start with our strap here. So you're going to measure in one inch from each of the short ends on the main strap piece. This is the two inch uh, wide one. We're gonna use a little bit of double-sided tape at that line and then fold the short ends into that line, bringing it in by a half inch fold over to the wrong side. Next, we're going to take some more double-sided tape or clips, and I have already drawn my center line down the wrong side of this piece, and I'm just going to put my tape down the center and then fold the long sides into that center line. This should create a one-inch wide strap. Once you've done one side, do the exact same thing with the opposite side. Again, becoming one inch wide. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and from each of the short ends again on the wrong side, we're going to mark in half an inch. Between those half inch marks, we're going to go ahead and we are going to put another strip of double sided tape down the center of the wrong side. Once that's done, we're going to take our accent piece and line up that short edge with that half inch mark that we made and stick this down nice and centered to the wrong side of that strap over top of that tape. Now we're going to take this to the machine and we are going to top stitch with the accent piece up. So make sure your bobbin thread is really, really uh, good because we are sewing from the wrong side currently. And what we're going to do is go in with an eighth of an inch from each end on the very ends here and then we are going to follow the accent pieces an eighth of an inch in from the accent pieces to sew this into place all the way around. This is what that looks like done. Now we want to flip this right side up and we're going to take our slider and put one of the short ends through like so, folding it over that center 
wrong sides together, and then securing with a rivet. Now go ahead and take one of your swivel clasps, like so. Feed the other short end up and around that center uh, bar of our slider. And then take your other swivel clasp and put it on the end like so and fold the short ends in about an inch or so, wrong sides together and secure with another rivet. Now I've already gone with my card slot and done the markings as per the pattern. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the second line, we're gonna fold it up and match it up to that top line like so. Finger press it really good. Go down to the, I think it's the fourth line and you're gonna fold it up to that third line like so. Finger press it good and secure with clips. Continue doing this until you have folded up all of the lines. One more to go here and then up to that other line. And this should make it so we're all about a half inch apart for each of our card slots. Go ahead and give this a really good press with your iron. Okay, I'm just gonna double check with the card that my depth is good and it is. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to top stitch all of those card slots, making sure we are not throwing, sewing through all the layers, just through the folded um, edges. So you're gonna have to kind of flip uh, the other parts in behind and out of the way so you don't accidentally sew through them. That is the top stitching done. Now we're going to measure in four inches to mark our center line of our card slots. You want to make sure this is definitely centered. Then we're going to sew up this line from the bottom up, back stitching over the folds for a little extra security, and then baste each of the raw edges on the side from bottom to top, and that just helps make sure nothing shifts when we do it from the same direction. There we go. Now we have our card slots. We're going to take our card slot backing. I'm just going to mark the top and on the bottom I'm going to put myself a reminder for about a five inch or so opening along the bottom. Match the top of the card back to the top of the card slots like so, right sides together and clip in place. Once we have that in place we're going to go ahead and we are going to sew um, from this line here, back stitching all the way around and stopping at the other side to leave an opening in the bottom. Go ahead, trim up your corners on an angle nice and close to the stitching and trim up our sides to a approximately an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Go ahead and turn a right side out. Poke out all of your corners and nice and sharp. You may need to use a pokey tool to get those corners nice and sharp. And then once you're done that and you're satisfied with that, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we are going to press it with the iron. And at that opening, we're going to make sure we are folding those in by a quarter of an inch, matching up uh, that bottom folded edge and press it in place. That's what that looks like there. I've also gone ahead and I top stitched along the very top and you can see my bottom is open. Set that aside for now. Now we're going to work on our uh, zipper ends here for our center divider. So what I've done is I've folded it in half and then folded, opened it up and folded the short ends into that center line. We're going to kind of sandwich the end of our zipper tape like this within that fold. And then we're going to top stitch along the zipper end making sure we are catching both sides. Just like so, go ahead and trim these up to be the same width as our zipper tape. 
Okay, so now we are going to take our one of our exterior zipper or center divider pockets and lining piece. We want to find the center of our zipper as well as have our top and bottom centers marked on our exterior and lining center divider pockets. I'm going to use double sided tape here as I do for all of my zippers. You can definitely use clips if you prefer. Go ahead and take your zipper right side down um, with the pull closing to the left and put it right sides together with our main exterior piece matching up that center and double check that it is definitely centered. Go ahead, you can base that if you like. Now take your lining piece and do the same thing. But what we're gonna do is put this right sides together with that exterior piece matching up that center, sandwiching the zipper tape, and then we're going to take this to the machine, put on our zipper foot, and sew across. Once that is done, what we're going to do is we are going to flip these wrong sides together like so, and we are going to top stitch just from zip tab to zip tab like so. You do not want to top stitch all the way to the ends. That is what that looks like. You can see we didn't go all the way to the ends, which is what we wanted. Now go ahead and do the same with the other two divider pockets on the other side of the zipper, which I have done. Now what we want to do is kind of flip the exterior pieces out of the way, match up the seams for our lining, and clip them in place. We're not going to be sewing the exterior panels just yet, we just want to close up these um, the pockets. Now we are going to be leaving the box corners, we are only going to sew down with a quarter of an inch along the sides and along the bottom of our, just our lining panels, making sure that we are not sewing our exteriors. Again, make sure uh, that seam is matching up so our pocket will be nice and straight. Okay, so that is done. This is what that looks like. And we have should have an enclosed pocket like so. Okay, now you're gonna take a strip of double-sided tape and put it along the wrong side bottom of our card slots. You're going to flip the back of our center divider pocket and the linings out of the way. Make sure your zipper pull is going to the left. You're going to measure down a one inch from the top of the zipper tape like so or from the top of the zipper panel. You're going to stick this in place and then we're going to base down the three sides, two short sides and the bottom and this is going to close up that uh, bottom part and then that'll give us our card slots as well as our slip pocket. That is what that looks like done. Make sure your cards still fit in there and mine do to perfection. Go ahead and set that aside for now. Okay, now we're gonna work on our accent flap. So on our pattern piece here, when we have our lining uh, accent flap panel face up or right side up and our pattern piece right side up, mark on the right side the placement of our male magnetic snap. So that's the part that has the little nubbin on it. Go ahead and install those back with scraps of Decoville Heavy or Peltex, scraps of duct tape or Gorilla Tape on the back of the prongs. Now you're going to take your accent main panel flap pieces and install the female side of the magnetic snaps to that exterior. I know that sounds weird, just go with it. So this is what that looks like. Now on the lining side and on the exterior side, on the wrong sides, we're going to go ahead and draw a line a one inch down from the top straight edge going to use some double-sided tape and then we're going to fold that top edge into that one inch line wrong sides together for both pieces. Okay. 
Now go ahead and take these two, put them right sides together, and the three or four raw edges there, the parts that aren't folded over, you're gonna go ahead and clip them together. And we are going to sew down all of these raw edge sides with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, leaving that top folded down side open for turning. That is done, go ahead and trim the sharp angles up on a corner and trim our seam allowances down to approximately a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance. And turn this right side out, making sure you're poking out all of those corners nice and sharp and your seams are super sharp. You want to make sure your shape for this is really good because the flaps are everything for this bag. You may need a little poker tool just to go into those corners to make sure they get nice and sharp all the way around. Once you're satisfied with how your corners are, go ahead and roll those seams between your fingers, securing them with clips to prepare for top stitching. Go ahead after this and top stitch all the way around, but not along the top. Okay, so that is all top stitched. Now what we want to do is we want to measure in from the sides here on the right side, an eighth of an inch from each side, an eighth of an inch in from the top. I'm just marking it with my sew line erasable pen and three eighths of an inch down. So we've created a three eighths of an inch rectangle here. Now we have our center divider pockets. So we're working on the side that isn't, doesn't have the card slots on it. We're going to measure down as per the pillar measurements and draw our line, our placement line here. Now we should have this exterior piece right side up as well as our flap right side up. So along the lining, you're going to go ahead and put some double-sided tape on the flap. And then you're going to stick this or with the flap right side up, nice and centered along that line. So your flap, you should be seeing the exterior as well as the exterior of our back center pocket. Make sure it is definitely centered, adjust if needed. Once we have that in place, we are going to make sure we are flipping the other parts of our center divider up and out of the way so we do not sew through it. And then we're gonna go ahead and top stitch the flap onto this exterior piece all the way around that rectangle that we drew with the top stitch length.
I've gone ahead and I've put the optional rivets in backed with some deckable heavy scraps. That's the center divider complete for now, set aside for now. Okay, now we're gonna work on our main flat panels. So once again, we're gonna put the male snaps on the aligning side of the main flat panel, which I have done. We're gonna take our exterior and we are gonna go ahead and we are going to sew all the way around, leaving the top open for uh, turning and top stitching, just like we did with the other flap. I'm just gonna double check that my magnetic snaps click into that accent flap and they do. Now we're gonna take our connector piece. I've already drawn my center line. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape here down that center line. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to fold those long ends into that center line. That's done on the wrong side still. We're gonna measure in three inches and draw a line. Same with the opposite short end. Then we're gonna take our D-rings. Well, I'm gonna put a little bit of tape here just to help hold my end in place once we do this, right along that line. We're gonna take our D-ring and you are going to slide it down the wrong side, so the flat end of the D-ring, down like this, and the short end of the connector, we're going to match up and stick down to the tape along that three inch, li three inch line. Now we're gonna take some more tape and put it down the center like so, and this is gonna help us keep it in place when we go to put it on the back panel. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we have our connector wrong side up with that tape on it. We have our flap with the lining side up, and you are going to stick the flap to the wrong side of the connector nice and centered, an eighth of an inch up from the connector's uh, long edge there, like so. Make sure it's nice and centered. Once that's done, you're gonna go ahead and measure in a half inch from the hardware like so. That's gonna give us a guide for when we go to stitch this in place momentarily. Now we're gonna take our main back panel. We're gonna put some double-sided tape right along the bottom edge here. We're gonna find our top and bottom centers of our exterior piece. Then we're going to measure down as per the measurements in the pattern and mark a line with some chalk or an erasable pen. And then we're going to line up our connector and flap um, piece that we have here, take the tape off and line it up nice and centered along that line. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead once it's centered, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to stitch around the long sides, up those little half inch marks that we did right, or those little marks we did right by the uh, connectors there as our guide, and stitch all the way around like so. Now I'm gonna pull my threads long and tie off in the back. If you do not do this method, make sure you backstitch at the start and stop so your threads won't unravel.
that's what that looks like complete now I've put in some rivets as well as I've installed my zipper pocket with overlay if you need a class on how to do that it's down below in the description now what we want to do is adjust from the exterior raw edge so not the flat the other part we want to draw a three-quarter inch line down from the back along the wrong side Now I've already gone ahead and done my lining pockets. If you need a classes on how I do those, those are down below in the description. On the back of both of these lining pockets, you also want to go ahead and draw a three quarters of an inch line down from the top side. Okay, now we're going to finish up our divider piece. We're going to take our bottoms of our exterior pieces as well as the lining pieces and line them up. And then we're going to base this in place with a quarter of an inch seam allowance just along this bottom side. Okay, now we're going to take our back lining panel and we're going to line up the bottom with this with some clips. Now you're going to see the main lining panel is wider than our center divider. That is exactly what we want. Once you have this in place, go ahead and baste this bottom in place. Just like so. Now you're going to see we're going to bring the sides together with that back lining panel like so. Match up that raw edge. And then we're going to take the front lining piece and we're going to put it right sides together. I'm going to stick my flap into the zipper pocket just so it's out of the way. Bring these right sides together and add it into the clips and then continue all the way up to the top clipping together the lining pieces where the center divider piece does not go all the way to the top. We're going to go ahead. We're going to start with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and work down and branch out to a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance to the bottom. Do the same with the opposite side. Now you may find when you come to where the... Um, zipper ends are you may need to go a little bit shorter just right at that point so you don't run over the zipper ends so feel more than welcome to go down to a quarter of an inch just where those zipper ends are and the reason we branch out to a 5 8 closer to the bottom is to make sure our lining is nice and snug inside okay so now what we can do make sure everything was caught now you can take that other lining piece and baste it in place with the other bottoms Now what we're going to do, I've trimmed up the seam allowance to 3 8 of an inch and now we need to box those corners through all those layers. Now, I used a glitter vinyl for my divider piece. I definitely do not recommend doing that. It's a little bit thick to be boxing these corners with. So for the divider piece, as I probably already said in the intro, make sure you're using a thinner vinyl canvas or cotton for these. It worked out for me, but I am on an industrial. So go ahead and bring the, the bottom seams and the side seams together, making sure you're catching all layers. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to sew through here with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Trim up those box corners. And that is our lining panel complete. Again, keep that flap tucked in and out. Um, now what you want to do is take some double-sided tape and put it along that previous one inch line that we had drawn. Make sure you are opening up your side seams as well. Apply the tape all the way around or along that line. And this is to help us pr uh, prepare for our drop-in lining. Once that tape is in place, go ahead and fold into that line, wrong sides together, sticking that raw edge down and under and leaving a nice folded edge along the top of our lining.
go ahead and set that aside for now. Now we're going to work on our exterior. Now on our front piece, you're going to just, as we did the other, install your two female snaps as per the pattern, as well as your nameplate. And just like the other pieces, what you're going to do now is along that top edge, we're going to draw on the wrong side a three quarters of an inch line and down from that top edge. Okay, now we're going to take our exterior pieces, put them right sides together, match up the bottom nice and centered with these right sides together. So across here with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once that is done, what we want to do is we want to open up those seams nice and flat. I'm just going to do a little snip about an inch in without cutting the um, thread. I'm going to use some double sided tape to help hold my seam open. And then I am going to finger press these seams open just where we will be meeting the box corners. We will be opening up all of our seams this way as we sew together this exterior. We want to bring these right sides together and do the same thing with the sides, leaving the bottom corners unsewn for now. We will be boxing those momentarily. You will also want to open up the seams at the top of this and at the bottom where the box corners are, just like we did with the bottom, just to help reduce some bulk when we go to sew this together. Once those are sewn and the seams are open, you can go ahead and box these corners by bringing that bottom seam and the side seams up like so. And then sewing across this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance for both box corners. Easy peasy. Now, just like we did with the lining, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my double sided tape around uh, that line. You could turn the bag right side out first if you prefer. It's completely up to you. I just find it's easier to apply the tape this way. And then once the tape is on, I'm going to turn this right side out. So go ahead, once the tape is on, turn it right side out or turn it right side out and apply the tape from the inside, whichever is your preference. Make sure you poke out those box corners nice and sharp. They look great. Press out all of those seams best you can. Once you're satisfied with that, go ahead and take that tape off and fold the top edge wrong sides together into that one inch line all the way around. I'm also going to go ahead and use clips just because I am using a vinyl and it likes a thicker vinyl and it does like to kind of fight the tape a little bit just to make sure nothing is going to shift out of the way. So close to being done, we're going to take our lining panel, we're going to make sure the back is against the back of our exterior, and we're going to drop the lining in like so. Push her in, and the first thing we want to do is we want to line up our exterior and lining side seams. Make sure our folded edges are nice and even, and clip them in place. So these are going in wrong sides together. Do the same with the opposite side. Once we have it nice and centered in there, again, you can see my lining uh, accent flap is still tucked inside. Keep it there. We do not want it getting in the way. Go ahead and evenly distribute the fabric, matching up those folded lines and the centers the best you can and clipping in place. Sometimes I find pulling it nice and tight helps put this exactly where it needs to be before putting your clips in. 
It should fit perfectly. Once you have it all clipped, go ahead. Now, if I was on my um, flatbed, I would definitely sew this from the inside and make sure my bobbin thread was nice, but I'm going to take this to my cylinder arm, or if you are on a free arm, you can definitely do it this way. And you're going to top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around, making sure you're catching both the lining and the exterior panels. That's top stitching done. Go and make sure on that inside that everything is caught well, that there are no holes. Press everything out really good. Make sure our snaps match up for both of our flaps. That's it. There's no more turning. Isn't that fantastic? Shape your bag a little, grab your crossbody strap, click it onto the D-rings. Admire your work. She looks amazing. Check out all these compartments and all of the pockets. So many in such a small bag, you just gotta love it. Everyone did wonderfully. Pat yourself on the back. And we're done. That's it, that's all. What did you guys think? We truly want your honest opinions. Please do leave us a like, give us a comment down below. You can buy this pattern from the Galaxy Customs website. That is also linked down in the description. Um, yeah, if you haven't already, do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Shoot me a comment down below. Uh, make sure you join uh, my Facebook group on the Facebook side, the Pin It Up Patterns Facebook group. We wanna see all of your aviatrixes there. Show them off. We want to see them. Um, again, if you want to support the channel further, you can buy me a coffee. Check out the membership side of the channel in case there's something there that um, sparks your interest. And until the next one, I'll catch you guys again.